Sergeant James here, and I've got a project today that I'm hoping doesn't become too epic, and it has to do with mattresses and mattress supports. That's why we're back here in the bedroom. So this is Steph's side, this is mine. Now, RV mattresses. One thing you've got to worry about with an RV mattress that maybe you don't have to worry about so much at home is condensation under the mattress, especially if you like to RV a lot where it's cold, like in the winter, like we do, or even if you're in the summer and you're someplace very humid, you can get moisture to collect under the mattress and oftentimes they're just put directly on plywood. And so it can get kind of swampy. You can wind up with mold in your mattress. Not a good thing. So you, you need to worry about moisture. And the key to combating that is airflow. So one way that RV manufacturers try to deal with this is with something like this. This is what Winnebago is provided here. It's the Froley system. So it's these little finger spring things that go underneath the mattress, keep it elevated, you get the airflow. And it also provides a little bit of comfort. And this is Steph's side of the RV. Now, I decided I didn't like the Froley system because it kept snagging my sheets and I make the bed like, you know, obsessively. And so it's snagging my sheets and not letting go of them drove me nuts. So I got rid of it. And then I had some slats in here because again, you need to keep the airflow under there. Well, the slats I didn't like because the unique challenge with these beds in the Echo is that they go up and down, right? And so with the slats on the bed, they were like scraping into the wall and scraping into the cassettes on the, on the windows and whatever. The slats didn't work out as well as I had hoped. So I've been looking for something else to do it. I think I found it. It's in the shop. We'll take you in there and I'll show you. But keep in mind this challenge that we've got here in dealing with, because part of this goes up and then part of it stays put. I don't know if you can see that back there. There's about four inches back there that stays put when the mattress and, and the bed go up. So let's head into the shop and I'll show you what I've got. So here's what I've got to deal with this. This is a product, kind of interesting looking, it's called Hypervent. It's, I got it from Mattress Insider, no affiliation, I paid full retail for this. It's actually the same place where I got my mattress from. So I like a firm mattress, so I'm not concerned about losing the springy aspect of the Froley. I just need to keep the airflow, and that's what this stuff does. Now, if you look at it, it comes all rolled up. So the bottom of it, this looks like what happens when a 3D printer makes a mistake. <laughs> it's actually what, and the other printer's going over there. But this is what it looks like when a 3D printer makes a mistake. And it's pretty firm, and the idea is, let's come over here. The idea is you just roll this out underneath your bed, put the mattress on top of it. You won't feel that it's kind of weird and crinkly, but it keeps the mattress elevated up off of the, uh, off of the floor. I want to show you, see, come down, come right down to the floor and see what you can do. I'm like on it and I'm pressing pretty hard and there's still plenty of airflow underneath this mattress. It doesn't, it compresses a little, but it doesn't compress all the way. And so by the time you're laid down, spread out across a mattress, there's going to be plenty of airflow under there to keep condensation and other nastiness at bay. So that's great. And the way most people install this, there are other, hey Mel, there are other videos out there of people installing it. And most people just roll it out underneath the bed, throw the mattress on top, you're done. Well, that's great if your bed doesn't move, but ours moves. And so what I'm concerned about, first we're gonna try it and just see if this goes up and down with the mattress and doesn't cause any problems. I don't think that's gonna be the case. I think it's gonna scrape on the window or window coverings. And what I don't want to happen is for this to get caught in that seam where the bed halves come apart and for it to get like scissored off. So I'm thinking I'm going to have to like cut another little piece to go on that strip and we'll have a weird shape. I'm going to have to come up with some way to secure this to keep it from falling into that crack. That's my thought. But it starts with just getting a piece out there and seeing what happens when the bed goes up and down and then we'll decide how we need to fix it. So more advanced install of Hypervent. Anyway, um, let's go measure. <laughs> All right, that's 31, but then I only want it to come up to here so that I need it 30 finished. And then here we go. We are 76, 30 by 76. All right, so I need to secure this down and I've tried everything and nothing sticks to this 3D printer spaghetti stuff here. So, but stuff does stick to this, this scrim surface that they put kind of on the, on the top. 
So, also, I don't like the idea of like the, looking at the raw edge on the outside of my bed because I make the bed. And so I want to kind of wrap it like that. You see, it's kind of wrapped. So what I figured out is that if I get three extra inches of material here, I can wrap it and then I can take some of this super sticky carpet tape and cut it in half so it's an inch. And then I've got like a little more than an inch on the bottom. I can fold it under and then that will stick down to the plywood underneath and will keep the edges from going someplace where I don't want them to. So basically I need to cut it three inches bigger on each edge. This edge is already two inches bigger, so I just need one inch here. So that means I need to cut 30, one, two, three, four. 34 by 82. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Hopefully that's right. <laughs> This stuff actually cuts fairly easily. No, no special tooling required to cut this stuff. That's good news. All right, so I'm peeling this stuff, the, this backing, away from this spaghetti stuff just a little bit because I need to cut one more inch off of here so I've got enough to wrap it around and have room to, to tape it up. So now I gotta mark off an inch. Just one inch. All right, we've got the cuts made. Let's see how this fits. And that will tuck under there, that's fine. But what I am concerned about is what happens when this bed goes up and down. So like this, yeah, that's not gonna, it got caught, among other things, it got caught on that uh, bit of a tunnel left over. Now there will be a mattress on it. All right, I need to think about how I want to approach this. Give me a minute. Okay, Chester, this came out like really nice looking actually with the, with the border around it. Anyway, um, on test fitting, I realized one, I need to cut off another half an inch in length and width just to allow for easy clearance and, and moving of the bed. And then there's no way that's gonna work with that going up and down past the, past the window and the plastic thing. So what I'm gonna wind up having to do is to cut like a little L-shaped piece out like that. And then use some of this or something else to have a piece that's stationary. And then this piece that will go up and down will be cut like that so that there'll just be that gap out of this piece and it'll fill in with that one. So more cutting. The good news is it cuts easy, so yay. So I'm putting some of this super sticky carpet tape on the underside of this. I'm just not releasing the, the other side of the paper yet because this is how I'm hoping I'll be able to keep the stuff in contact with the plywood and not sliding around like, you know, when I make the bed and stuff. But we'll see. Worse that happens is it doesn't stick and I have a terrible sticky mess underneath my... I shouldn't even say that, now it'll happen. I figure it's easier to do this here than out in the RV when three sides of this are against walls. There. And up. Oh, look at that. And down. And it stays, didn't move, undisturbed. I'm pretty, I'm feeling pretty good about this. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this stuff down. We'll start up here. Right. 
Good, good. All right. So then the only thing left to do, it's getting hot in here. Only thing left to do is to uh, come up with a little piece to fit in there. All right. Okay, so I had some of this stuff. This is upholstery backing fabric, like you might see on the underside of a chair. Um, I had some of this stuff. And what I'm gonna do is take this extra piece. This is my off cut from where I cut out the thing. And I'm just gonna wrap it. And then we'll uh, tape it down. So yeah, what do I need? How much? All right, we've got this nice little sandwich of material and and scrim fabric. So if I've done this right, I'll just remove this and drop it in place and we'll be done. We'll see how that works out. There we go. I'm, uh, I'm going to call this one done. So that's my solution. This stuff here, the hyper vent to uh, moisture underneath the mattress or to keeping moisture from collecting underneath the mattress. Does it work? I don't know yet. I should point that out. I don't know if this works. I'm taking it on faith. So maybe once we've been through a nice hot, humid summer and then we go camping some in the winter where we get a lot of condensation, then I'll know if it really works or not. So there will be a post over on thefitrv.com and I'll link to it in the YouTube description where you can leave comments, ask questions. If you've used this stuff yourself and you know, then let me know what you think of it and what I'm in for. Um, and then you know, I'll try to post on that on that post after we've used it for a year. I'll try to post, did it really work or not? So check out that link, leave comments, ask questions. I'm done. It's hot in here. It's 97.8 degrees in here. So we're calling this one done. We'll see you later. Bye.